So two tier care Starmer has finally had to admit, only about two months too late, that caring about mass uncontrolled immigration or the invasion of our southern border via the channel doesn't make you a so-called far-right lunatic. Do you understand people have legitimate concerns about immigration? I think people are genuinely concerned about immigration aren't and should not be. So people, people are worried are not far-right, are right, they? They're not worried, but they're not far-right individuals if they're worried about immigration. No, absolutely not. No, quite. Uh, many, many people across the country are concerned about exactly. immigration, but they wouldn't for a minute go onto the street and throw a brick at a police officer. Um, and I think it is wrong to pretend or it, uh, that they are one and the same. But what we also can't pretend is that the Prime Minister has a plan to bring down illegal or legal migration with over 700 pouring in via small boats on the channel alone. That was on Sunday with God knows how many more being smuggled in on trucks. The Rwanda scheme has been scrapped, so what the hell now? This is an issue the academic turned independent media mogul Matt Goodwin has explored in his new short film, How to Stop an Invasion. I'm going to tell you something that nobody in Westminster and the corridors of power are going to tell you. Britain is being invaded. Since 2018, more than 135,000 people have entered Britain illegally, enough to fill a city the size of Exeter. And they're joining more than 1.2 million people who have entered the country illegally, enough to fill a city the size of Birmingham. Now, if you look at home office data, 70% of all people coming over on the small boats crossing the channel are young men. And they're coming mainly from Muslim countries. But as Matt outlined in France, Macron's government actually has no real intention of helping. Welcome to Calais, France. This is where the invasion begins. The people who enter Britain illegally have already passed through multiple safe countries like this one. France is a safe country. They are not facing immediate peril, they're not in immediate danger, and they have no right to enter our country illegally. So why do they want to come to the UK? Because if I'm being honest with you, we're a soft touch. We give them welfare, we give them housing, we give them money, we give them a low wage, low skill, delivery economy where they can find work. We embrace them with open arms. So more of them come. And we know Slippery Starmer has no intention of rocking the EU boat. I mean, quite the opposite, in fact, as these cosy pictures and ex-posts from last night talking about resetting relationships during an intimate chat prove. Now, I declared the invasion of the UK a national emergency in November 2021. And the inertia, which is tearing the fabric of Britain apart and leaving many dead, is deeply frustrating. But what is the solution? Well, policy-wise, this is what Matt Goodwin is advocating for. I'd reform or repeal Tony Blair's Human Rights Act and replace it with something else. And I'd leave the European Convention on Human Rights so that like Australia and New Zealand and Canada and other nations, we can actually control who is coming in and out of our own country. I'd also create an active deterrent whereby we process illegal migrants and refugees outside of Britain, away from the British people and our children. That's ultimately what we need to do to keep the British people and our children safe. Now, Matt calls the mass immigration obsession by consecutive governments under the Uni Party a mass experiment. And as an academic, he has called on the data to stop being covered up. It is also clear it's not a fringe view to be deeply concerned about this, but rather a majority one. And speaking at the Reform UK conference in Birmingham at the weekend, looks pretty clear that he agrees with me that the political answer to stopping this great experiment is probably down to one Nigel Farage. An awareness that you're not speaking for 10% or 14% of the country on many of these issues, you are speaking for the forgotten majority, which is why I think ultimately, when we come back here in four years, five years, or we come back after the elections in Wales, or we come back after the local elections, I don't think I'm going to be talking to a party on 14% of the national vote at a general election. 
I think I'm going to be talking to a political party that has completely reshaped the front lines of British politics and put the British people back in charge. So thank you very much. And I'm delighted to say that Matt Goodwin joins me now. And I should point out that that brilliant short film is available to watch on Matt's substack, mattgoodwin.org. It's a community of over 55,000 like-minded individuals from around the world. I am a subscriber and an avid reader. And actually, I promise you that with Substack, you know I'm on there too, As uh, that there's really no need actually for MSM uh, newspapers these days. So Matt, congratulations on the film. So great to have you on Outspoken. Why do you think the elite class is so desperate to avoid this issue, even though polling that you have done shows it is the number one thing that we're actually worried about? Well, firstly, it's great to be with you, Dan. I think the reason that many people in the elite class are not really responding to this issue is basically because they don't want to respond to this issue. They don't see securing the borders as a priority. They view this as a, an inconvenience. They're pretty relaxed with... Uh, weak national borders with high levels of immigration and so on both the left and the right in the old parties what we basically have is an elite consensus the this is an acceptable uh, state of affairs and certainly there's not much appetite within the old parties to disrupt the legal architecture that surrounds this issue which I and I know you have argued as well needs to be disrupted if we're going to get to the root of this problem that means leaving the European Convention on Human Rights. It means reforming Tony Blair's Human Rights Act. And above all, it means having an active deterrent like Rwanda or even bringing Rwanda back so that it actually works, uh, which would dissuade people from making this journey and ultimately, Dan, making a mockery of the claim that we are a self-governing, independent, sovereign nation. Yeah, indeed. And actually, I want to just show a little bit of when you were in Calais, because you outline in really good detail why these migrants are so desperate, even though they're in France, a safe country, why they are so desperate to come to the UK. Welcome to Calais, France. This is where the invasion begins. The people who enter Britain illegally have already passed through multiple safe countries like this one. France is a safe, country. They are not facing immediate peril, they're not in immediate danger, and they have no right to enter our country illegally. So why do they want to come to the UK? Because if I'm being honest with you, we're a soft touch. We give them welfare, we give them housing, we give them money, we give them a low wage, low skill, delivery economy where they can find work. We embrace them with open arms. So more of them come. And I mean, under Labour, Matt, literally no deterrent, is there? Rwanda scrapped, even the Bibi Stockholm barge scrapped, and now the migrants are going to be scattered all around the country, coming to a community near you. I, mean, I think it's important that people understand just how badly Labour have managed this issue in the last two months. I mean, Dan, look at what's actually happened here. The Rwanda plan has been scrapped. We have no deterrent at all. The Illegal Migration Act has been amended. We're not detaining and deporting illegal migrants when they enter Britain. Yvette Cooper has confirmed that the vast majority of people who enter the country illegally, who are in the, the asylum system in the backlog, well, they're going to be granted asylum, essentially. We're going to get, give another incentive for people to come over, because if they get here, you know, they now are told that actually the system will allow them to stay. And this is why, Dan, the numbers are still going up. As you said in your opening comments, we've had nearly 30,000 crossings this year. We've got nearly 140,000 since 2018. And we've got this ludicrous talk, Dan, about how Labour are going to smash the gangs. Now, <laughs> I can say to you and your audience exclusively that when I was on the channel talking to the captains and the fishermen down on the channel, they said to me quite clearly, that the numbers had rocketed after Labour won the election because the gangs knew there was a softer regime in town, that there was a new sheriff in town and they weren't that bothered about upholding the rule of law. So I am predicting that what we're going to see 
increasingly between now and 2029, the next election is going to be an explosion in the small vote numbers. Because lastly, Dan, one thing we all have to, I think, bear in mind here is that Keir Starmer has consistently shown himself unwilling to do what needs to be done on this issue, saying you're going to smash the gangs. Dan, look at the war on drugs. You know, every agency in the West has been saying for 50 years they're going to smash the gangs. But unless you actually deal with the underlying root cause, unless you discourage and remove the incentives for people to make the perilous journey, like removing the need for them to take drugs, smashing the gangs isn't going to make a difference. Everybody knows that. People in the National Crime Agency have told me that. So I'm desperately concerned about what the British taxpayer is going to have to put up with over the next five years. And ultimately, Dan, I know you and I agree what this country needs, what, what our politics needs is radical wholesale change. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I do want to come to the political solution very shortly, actually. But just before we get there, I want to look at what changed in your view after the Southport massacre, because it seems to me there was a bubbling anger in the community which obviously exploded. And while no one advocates for any form of violence, and I'm very clear on that and have always been very clear on that, by the way, whether it was Black Lives Matter or pro-Hamas demonstrations, violence against the police is wrong. But it does feel like the, the silenced majority, as I call them, or the forgotten majority, as you call them, are sick of being ignored but at the same time, Matt, the commentariat are actually too scared to talk about Islam extremism at all. I mean, I'm sure you saw it at the Labour conference, but Vic Cooper and Keir Starmer, who spent a big chunk of their speech slamming uh, the so-called rioters after the Southport massacre, did not refer to the threat of extreme Islam, which we know is the biggest terror threat facing this country. They did not refer to it once. Well, ultimately, because this is a Labour government that is riddled with identity politics, which views the majority group with suspicion, if not hostility, and views minority groups as being sacred and untouchable. So as we saw during the riots and the protests, there was violence on all sides, Dan. Everybody saw that, who was on X or Twitter. Everybody saw the Muslim gangs, the machetes. Everybody saw uh, the riots and the uh, disturbances in Hair Hills and Leeds. Everybody saw the British Muslim guys beating up the police officers at Manchester Airport a few days before. You know, we, we can see what's happening to the country. And this sort of narrative that's coming out of Keir Sama and Yvette Cooper, which is essentially all of this stuff over here is far right thuggery. It's extremism. It's just a bit, you know, uh, you know, we, we don't really want to spend much time engaging with it in a serious way. And actually, we're going to ignore simultaneously all of these issues over here that happen to involve minority communities. I think the British people now see straight through this. And I'm really concerned, actually, Dan, because we've only had this government for two months. And already, whether you look at Rachel Reeves celebrating, I mean, the only thing she's managed to celebrate is the fact that a woman is in the Treasury, David Lammy, speaking at the UN, the only thing he seems to be able to celebrate is that he happens to be a black man speaking at the UN. So what you've got is a sort of classic identitarian view of the world. Uh, minorities uh, are really positive to be celebrated, majorities to be treated with suspicion. And you saw Keir Starmer in his interview with Chris Hope, you just showed a segment of it. I mean, he really does struggle to bring himself to the view that actually people's concerns over migration are acceptable and legitimate. And more importantly, Dan, that in order to respond to those, we are going to need wholesale policy change, not just tweaking with mm. you know, apprenticeships and shortages in the economy, which he's been babbling on about this week. We're going to need a commitment from the old parties, or otherwise there are going to be new parties that will replace them, to dramatically reduce net migration to below 100,000 a year, to leave whatever international convention is necessary to control our borders and to put the British people and British families before international conventions and you know European courts and activist lawyers who have no serious interest in upholding the security and the safety of the British people. And there is such a human cost to this current policy. And I was delighted, Matt, to see during uh, your very good speech, by the way, at the Reform UK conference, that you mentioned Thomas Roberts, 
because Thomas Roberts is a name and a guy that I've been speaking about for a very long time, but it's actually shocking and an indictment on our mainstream media that probably most Brits don't know his face and don't know his name. So, so Thomas Roberts was, uh, well, look, you, you tell the story best. Here, here's a little look at what you had to say about him at the Reform UK conference. Oh, I think we'll come to that shortly. But I spoke to Thomas Roberts' father, uh, and I think that's worth looking at too. When you hear people criticise folk who say, look, we, we have to stop the boats because we have to stop this flow of illegal migrants into the country because so many of them, no one's saying 100%, but so many of them are criminals. And they say, no, you're, you're being heartless, uh, you're lacking compassion. I don't What's think your com response to that? I don't think compassion comes into it. It's common sense. And I ask anyone who, who pleads compassion, if it's your child, your son, your daughter, your mother, your father, is in the same situation, you wouldn't think the same. Anything you want, we'll put you in schools or here, there and everywhere, we'll give you a life that you don't have to pay for because you're an asylum seeker. And that's wrong. Nine times out of ten, they'll find out the info after the event, not before the event, otherwise someone else is going to die. So that is the human cost. And Matt, I think it's just worth you outlining. Sorry, I, I thought we had uh, the clip of you talking about it, but I think it's just worth you outlining the failures in regards to illegal immigration that allowed Thomas Roberts to be stabbed to death by an illegal migrant in Bournemouth on a night out. Best time of year, isn't it? Football is back. We're talking Premier League in the UK and in the US NFL Sundays and college football Saturdays. And with that comes the glorious grind of fantasy football lineups. This is where your inner manager comes alive, setting the perfect fantasy roster, screaming at your TV and making last minute waiver moves that either make you a hero or the guy everyone ridicules in the group chat. But listen, while you're over here making sure your fantasy team is dialed in, don't let your personal grooming become the guy that gets left on the bench. Because let's be honest, nobody wants to fumble their grooming routine. This is where Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra comes in, acting as your all-in-one grooming playbook. From keeping things sharp down below with the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra to taking care of those rogue air and nose hairs with the Weed Whacker 2.0, this is the lineup that will keep you looking and feeling like a champ on and off the field. It will make you feel clean, confident, and ready to dominate your fantasy league. So, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Groin and Body Hair Trimmer. It's the franchise player of your grooming roster. It has precise trimming capabilities. It's reliable, efficient, and gets the job done without fumbling. Whether it's for a date night, a weekend tailgate, or just everyday grooming, this is the tool you want on your squad. Now, no one wants a nose or ear hair making some sort of guest appearance on game day. So the Weed Whacker 2.0 handles those details like a pro, keeping you neat and ready to go. No missed tackles in your grooming gang. And we have two free gifts to offer you today as well. The Boxers 2.0 Midnight Bravo and the Shed 2.0 Toiletry Bag Premium Gear to ensure you're always ready for action, whether at home or and on the road. So join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped like me and get ready for kickoff by heading over to manscaped.com. If you use the code OUTSPOKEN at checkout, you will get 20% off your entire order and free shipping. So trust me, you'll be drafting the real MVP of grooming this season. So let me repeat the website, www dot manscaped.com use the code outspoken at checkout for 20 percent off and free shipping stay on top of your grooming game and be ready for anything the season throws your way well i'm glad you've also been drawing attention to the case dan because it is truly horrific and if we lived in a just society thomas roberts would be as well known as george floyd uh or stephen lawrence yes. that's the reality of the situation what happened is an illegal migrant entered the country he told the authorities he was 14. They didn't check. They put him in a secondary school next to year nine pupils. He was 19, Dan, and he'd already killed two men in Serbia. He went on to assault other children in the school. He assaulted his foster mother. And he was reported to be walking around the streets of Bournemouth with a machete two days before the police, uh, sorry, two days before he murdered Thomas Roberts and the police couldn't find him. And even uh, the coroner 
uh, after this tragedy, she ruled that there could not be a full inquest into Thomas's death because she said there was not systemic failures in the system. Now, as I said at the conference, if I don't know, you know, if this is not if this is not a systemic failure, then I don't know what is. And I think there are lots of people in the country who are looking at cases like this. And of course, also we had the Abdul Azidi case, the guy who poured uh, chemicals and, and acid over the young mother and two children. In fact, I've got a piece coming out in the coming days on, on these 10 horrific cases that highlight just what is happening in Britain. And what they're all telling us, Dan, and this tragic case of Thomas Roberts is we have to regain control over our borders. We have to treat the British people with the respect and, and the decency they deserve because some people like Thomas Roberts are now paying the full price for the failure of our political class to deal with this issue. I'm amazed nobody in frontline British politics, Dan, has actually talked about this case in detail and highlighted it. In fact, I'm actually quite appalled at how few people seem to know about it. That's why I dedicated the speech to the case, because I wanted people to understand that somewhere out there is a family that has paid the price of these luxury beliefs that are held by our political class who say that actually we don't, we're not going to prioritise fixing the borders. And I think it's disgraceful, Dan. It's absolutely disgraceful. Indeed. And there was failure after failure after failure, as you outline. And this is happening all the time. And by the way, it's not just young men being killed. It's young women being raped, which is obviously not a nice thing to talk about, but it is happening. And there are terrorists that we're also importing. So that's why this is such a really important issue. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wilson Outspoken. Please do subscribe if you want lots more clips and interviews like that. Plus, if you want to watch our totally uncensored after show, then visit www.outspoken.live.